So hi, my name is Anthony. I'm a graduating senior from Mission San Jose High School, and for my solar project, I use the temperature sensor and an Arduino Uno to detect the ambient temperature uh, and display it on LCD. And this is my main project, the 3D printer. So it's based on a common design where you can move your X and Y gantry, uh, but then the Z gantry uh, moves um, independently with, your, with the lead screw. And on my Z gantry, I have a heated glass uh, build plate, and it's driven by this um, lead screw here, and it's supported by these two uh, linear rods. And for my X, Y gantry, I have a system of belts that drive uh, these linear rods and bearings. And the gantry itself houses a hot end, a fan, and a few sensors to help uh, position the actual um, hot end. So <clears throat> for my demo, I'll just start a print. Um, the first thing it wants to do is to home the entire system so it knows where the print head is and in the internal uh, coordinate system. So right now it just homes the Z so that it's right flush against the console. And then it homes the X axis and it starts forming the Y axis. So it now knows um, where the components lie within the system, which is 000, zero, zero right here in the corner. And then it will start to preheat the components. So these, uh, the hot end itself will get up to around 220 degrees Celsius, while the build plate needs to get up to 65 degrees Celsius. And um, that might take like a minute or two, so I'll just continue talking and it might start printing somewhere um, during my talk. Um, so I'll just talk more about the software involved in a 3D printer. Now obviously it's very difficult to control hot and hot end like this, so I did not code in the software myself. Uh, it's mostly, it's based on an engine called Cura. And what Cura does is it takes in a 3D model and it'll slice it into layers, so something like this boat here. Uh, this boat can have over maybe 500 layers. And for each layer, it generates G-code that tells the um, print hot end where to move in order to generate the layer. Um, Furthermore, uh, you need firmware to actually uh, take in the G-code and send the voltage to the motors. So the firmware I use is called the Petier, and it runs off of an Arduino Mega and a RAM shield. So the shield itself is the core of the system, which takes in the 12 volt, 30 amps from my power supply and the, the power outlet, and then redistributes the voltage to the different motors, sensors, and fans on the unit. Um, furthermore, um, Oh yeah, so some of the really difficult uh, portions of the project would be firmware and software. So for the firmware, um, there could, especially firmware, there's over like 50 files to sift through and um, maybe about a few hundred custom functions that need parameters. So uh, especially on a DOI system like this, you have to know your, your own printer really well. So you can tune the parameters in each one of the functions so that the hot end moves reliably and uh, the way you want it to. Uh, furthermore, um, in software, um, like pre-printing software can often be really uh, confusing. For example, um, if like a motor doesn't move, there could be many, many issues. Why? It could be electrical. You're not applying enough, uh, supplying enough amps. It could be software side. Uh, it could be hitting like a soft end stop, or it could even be mechanical. It's stalled. Um, so some modifications that I can make to this system would be to. Um, upgrade the core board. So right now I'm using an 8-bit board, but if I upgrade my to a 32-bit board, I, I'm pretty sure it would print faster and also more reliably. Oh, it's starting to print right now. Um, what I'm printing right now is just a calibration cube. So the hot end itself will move um, in like a square. And the first thing it does is it prints a raft around the, the bar. So it basically primes itself by trying to extrude filament. And once it gets to a point where it can extrude, it'll start printing the actual uh, block. So, you guys probably can't see it, but yeah, it's going. Uh, so, um, so, a few things that I learned from this stamp were mostly uh, electrical. So, I came into the program knowing a lot about uh, mechanical and uh, the build portions, but not a lot about the electrical side. So, um, like through working with the firmware and with my motherboard, I learned a lot, a lot about electrical. And, uh, the instructors themselves really helped, so I'm confident that with any of my future projects, I'll be able to tackle them from start to finish. Mm -hmm. Alright, I'll just kill the brain, because it's pretty loud. It might take a while for the but like, in the meantime, uh, any questions? So, 3D printing itself requires a lot of precision, and if you were to just 
uh, say use a DC motor and say, oh, just turn on for 10 seconds and then and turn off for another 10 seconds and, and like have like a really big loop where it just turns and stuff. Um, eventually, over time, you would start to lose precision because these DC motors, uh, the lower amount of voltage you get, one second could be a full rotation, it could be like 0.9 rotations. So, um, step motors have really solid control through their use of their copper coils to control rotation, um, to move rotationally. Like maybe that, um, since 200 steps is a rotation, you can move one step, two step, three steps. So it has a really precise amount of uh, control you can have. So, so the molt, the uh, melted plastic, is there something that feeds that? How does that oh work? yes, perfect. So uh, there's a this nice little rolling tube here. So what happens is that the filament comes from this spool and it gets pushed through these gears, these like little spiky gears that push it through this loading tube and into the hot end. So it'll start actually extruding filament straight onto the plate. So you actually have another motor there? Oh yeah, there's four motors in total. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's the type of thing compared to the mark, um, for that one marker? So, um, basically, uh, if, you build your, if you build your own printer, you're able to customize a lot of features yourself. So if you were to say buy a printer from the market or buy a kit, um, you don't get the same amount of control over your own printer. Like I have access to, as I said, the hundreds of firmware functions and all the parameters. And if I wanted to, I could change them all to optimize the printer. Um, but yeah, um, I mean, market options tend to be like more reliable and easy to use. And there's definitely no problem with them. Uh, an instructor who shall remain nameless said you couldn't do this during your time here. So I actually said that. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't think so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was not aware. Well, it's a nameless okay. um, what, what made you believe you could actually build a 3D printer in a short amount of time? Um, like, I, I come from a pretty strong mechanical background. I, I have like a decent amount of uh, experience in robotics and a lot of things in the past. And when um, actually designing the printer, I knew like very solidly how it would actually like be built. So I built the thing in like a week and a half, and then the rest of the time was figuring out how to like do the electrical side. So like I knew I could crank out the field part really quickly. What do you want to do to make it better? Oh yes, there it is loud as you heard earlier, and that is because my motor drivers so you can get five of them for like a dollar from China. So um, <laughs> yeah, there are definitely better motor drivers out there that run quieter and give people more torque. So those are good improvements to have. In your mechanical build, do you have to kind of like carefully align things or it just kind of comes together? And it's good? Yes, great question. So I spent more than like eight hours aligning things on this um, this print, uh, this printer, because uh, this bed itself has to be perfect, like level to the hot end. So um, there's actually these bed leveling screws on the four corners that you can screw in to sort of like adjust the height of the bed. And furthermore, the bed itself can be like, it can be like a diamond or anything. So uh, you have to really uh, make sure everything's square on the printer. Oh yes, I was just wondering oh, which college I want to major. Great question, Leo. I am going to UC Berkeley and in the College of Engineering, mechanical engineering degree.